Great. So I'd like to welcome everybody to this session. My name's Ian McMaster. I'm the editor in chief of Business Spotlight magazine. Um, and you can you may see on my uh, picture there that I'm based in Munich. So I would just like you to uh, type into the chat function where you are based um, and choose the option panelists and attendees so that everybody can see uh, your answers. So if you can just type into the chat function where you are. South Korea, fantastic. Let's keep going. Uh, Dusseldorf, Berlin, Bamberg, Canada, Poland, Berlin too. So a few in Berlin. I'm just looking at the chat on the side here. Argentina, welcome Argentina. It must be early a few. Mexico, wow, this is fantastic. We're going all around the world. Spain, thank you very much. Keep them coming, uh, put in there. So, um, yeah, keep them coming. If you're coming in now, just pop this right in the, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of keeping an eye on it. Um, and I'm, what I'm going to do today is give you some ideas for how you can be more successful at job interviews. Look at some mistakes that you might make. You might still get the job. Um, help you to adopt one or two successful strategies based on my experience of um, interviewing people over the last, well, it's now 30 plus years, 35 years. So if I, um, if I move on, the magazine um, that I work for, Business Spotlight magazine here in Germany, it's a magazine, business, international business communication in English. Um, we're Spotlight for Lag is our publishing group and part of the Die Zeit publishing group. Um, and we produce a range of multimedia products, print, digital, audio, exercise workbooks, teaching notes, website, apps. Um, if you know us, please type Y for yes in the chat. If you don't know us, type N. So Y for yes or N for no. Okay, quite a few of you do, some of you don't. Um, I'll give you the website at the end and you can um, find out more about us. So, thank you very much. Yeah, keep yes or no. I'm going to ask you to do various things in the chat function as we go along to, an to answer some questions. Um, I will pick up on your answers. And if you have any questions yourself, then um, I will try to uh, pick those up as well. So, What's the plan for the next 25 minutes? Because we're going to stop at quarter to, oh, well, in 25 minutes time, that's quarter to six here in uh, Germany, or I'm, because I'm based in Munich. Um, what's the plan? The aim is to look at some successful strategies for applications and job interviews, um, and to look at some typical mistakes and how you can avoid them. Actually, I forgot to say one thing. If I go back to this slide here, this is the current issue of our magazine. It's a special issue on career success. And um, on the cover, it says we have two free downloads of tips and language, uh, useful language for job interviews and job applications. So with the magazine, there's a web address in the magazine that you can download those two things free. I forgot to say that. So successful strategies, typical mistakes, um, and how you can avoid them and therefore reduce your stress and questions or comments via the chat function. Let's start with somebody who is a very memorable candidate. Um, he's the candidate I remember more than anybody else in the last 35 years because he said, he said a sentence made up of 10 words. The first two were, if I, and the last two were the job. Um, what did he say? What were the missing words? Maybe in the chat function, see if you can guess what he said. The sentence begins, if I, it ends the job. So there are six missing words. If anybody wants to have a, uh, a guess in the chat function, what did this person say? What did he say? If I want to, I will get the job. Okay, nice one. Um, what did he say? Um, that, that it was so memorable uh, that even 30, some nearly 30 years later, I still remember you. Mm -hmm. If I were you, I would hire me for the job. That's interesting. Let's have another one. Anybody else? If I had known, I would have got. This is good. You're very good at conditional sentences. Uh, anybody else want to have a go? If I were you, I'd give you the job. You'd give me the job or give, give him the job. If I, 
Okay, interesting. Well, you're quite close, a number of you are quite close, but you're also completely wrong. Don't be offended. What the guy said was this, if I were you, I wouldn't give me the job. I wouldn't give me the job. Oh, I am not suggesting that you should say that at a job interview. Um, but when he said that, it made me sit up and listen. I thought, this guy is interesting. That's an interesting statement. Hmm. Why did he say that? Well, certainly I was listening. So this is your first um, point about job interviews. Sometimes we make impact on people in surprising ways. I will repeat this. I am not suggesting that you <laughs> say this yourselves. I had just an interesting experience. Now, I'm going to ask you this question a number of times. And again, it's yes and no. My question is, do you think he got the job? Yes or no? OK, that's interesting. I would say majority of you at the moment seem to think he got it and some of you because he was unusual and interesting. Well, actually, he didn't get the job. But the reason he didn't get the job was not because he made he made this unusual comment that made him interesting to me. The reason he didn't get it was actually, to be honest, he wasn't the right person for the job in terms of his experience and qualifications. Um, and maybe he knew that and that's why he said that. But he realized he wasn't. It's an unusual thing. I've never heard it from anybody else. Um, but there we are. He made an impact on me. We make impact on people in surprising ways. Let's go on to another case. A candidate came um, for an interview and I asked her about how well she knew our magazines. And this is what she said. So my question to you, I said, how well do you know our magazine? I think I saw it at once at the railway station. So my question to you is the same question. Did she get the job? Probably not. No, no, no. Unlikely. No, no, no. OK, so. Yes, because she was honest. Yes. Well, again, you could say, yes, she was honest, but um, I have to be honest with you and say that I wasn't very impressed by this comment. Um, I thought if you've come to a job interview and you saw it at the railway station, but you didn't actually buy it or look at it, then you probably haven't done your preparation. We'll come back to that later. So did she get the job? No, she didn't. But to be honest, again, although this is not a very sensible comment, I think, to make at a job interview, had she been the best candidate on other grounds, experience and skills, and had she been able to convince us, she would have got it despite this comment. So one point I'm making here is you can say silly things, you can make mistakes, but if you are clearly the best person for the job, you can still get the job. So that's your task to make clear you are the best person for the job. Let's look at one another one. This person said, if you have any small jobs that are, that are difficult to up, I would be very glad to help. Now, I'm not asking you what that word was. It was a very rude word, but let's take a polite version. Difficult to mess up, difficult to get wrong. I would be glad to help. Same question. Did this person get the job? Okay, this, mm -hmm. most of you are saying no now. It was a very rude word. Um, okay, this is a trick one. This guy did get the job. Why did he get the job? Was because actually he was a student applying for a week's um, uh, work experience, a school child actually, school experience, work experience. Um, his mother had worked for us for a long time. She asked if he could come for us for a week. I said he has to write a proper application and he did. He was 16, I think, or 17. And because he knew me and he probably thought I would find this funny, that is what he wrote. So he got the job, but only because we were doing his mother a favour. So that one doesn't really count. It, was a, a one, it wasn't a full time job. It was one week of work experience. Last one. You see, people say things at job interviews which are interesting. 
So a person said, what can I do to make myself irresistible? What can I do to make myself irresistible? Did this person, this woman, get the job? Yeah, vitamin B with the other chap. Yeah, did this person get the job? Context is important, says Helen. Yes, context is always important. It's all about context and situation. So to understand uh, the significance of any of these comments, you need to know the situation. So with the previous one, you needed to know the relationship between me um, and this the, the young lad's mother. In this case, did this woman get the job by saying, what can I do to make myself irresistible? Who thinks she got it? Well, some of you do, some of you don't. Uh, Okay, this one could have gone either way. In fact, she did get the job. Um, but why did she get the job? Anyone want to guess why she got the job? Why did this woman get the job? She wanted to improve herself, okay. She was original, she was showing interest. She made impact, she did make impact, but she had quite, yes, Maria, you've got it. She was the best, it is that simple. I'd given you the answer on the other one. She got it because she was the best candidate, not because of this, com this uh, comment, which was actually a kind of a joke. But again, you need context to know that. So she got it because she was the best candidate. So to repeat the first half of this, Thing. I've shown you examples of odd things people say that people make impact in different ways and actually the criteria is are you the best person for the job and can you convince the interviewer the interviewee the interviewers one or more that you are and that starts from your job app your job application that you send and it also how you um, how you perform at the job interview so 10 tips for success Let's get cracking. We've got uh, eight, uh, 18 minutes to get through these. So first one is very obvious. Be prepared and be informed. So the lady who said she'd seen the magazine at the railway station, okay, you've, she was honest, but she was not well informed. She knew nothing about us. I did that when I was a student. I applied for a job about a company I knew nothing about. I didn't get the job. I had an excuse back then because that was 40 years ago. There was no internet. There is no excuse nowadays for not being informed and prepared. Simple um, might sound banal, but you would be amazed how often people that I've seen make basic mistakes. They do not inform themselves uh, before they come to so find out about the organization, find out what it does, find out what its current challenges are because you want to make yourself an interesting uh, interv interview, interviewee, interview, uh, interviewee job candidate. Tip two, I'm going through these quickly. Be professional, but not too professional. What do I mean by that? Well, do you remember the guy who said he, I shouldn't give him the job? Another reason why I wanted to give him the job was because he talked about his hobby his hobby was being a magician. He was a hobby magician and I love magic. So we made a con, I would have loved to give him the job because I would have loved to have a magician on my staff um, who could make, for example, people disappear if they're annoying me or whatever. Okay, or just do some tricks to entertain me. Again, I'm, I'm kind of joking, but the point is there, you, of course you have to be professional, but you want to also make, some kind of connection to your um, interviewer. That's why personally, it's just a personal thing. I quite like people's when they have say something about their hobbies. I mean, reading books and watching, going to the cinema as we, you know, when we can, if they, when they're open again, um, does not count as a very interesting hobby. But if you're something there that goes beyond that, um, you might catch the imagination of the interviewer. Let's go on. Be the solution. Don't just look for a solution. Now, what do I mean by this? Uh, okay, I'll ask you a question. Who said this? Put it in the chat box. Okay, we've had one person. Kennedy, JFK. 
JFK. Okay, John F. Kennedy, yeah, former America president. What year did he say it in? What year did he say it in? This is a general knowledge test. Mm -hmm. We've had one answer, 1963, 62. Mm -hmm. When he was in Berlin, uh, 61, says Thomas. Okay, what month? You see, you, this is a serious general knowledge test here. What month? Summer, says Helen. Yes, it probably was summer, but uh, in Australia. It was January 1961 is in his inaugural address. Now, what's the relevance of that here? The relevance is that, um, in my experience, too many people at job interviews say why the job would be great for them. So in our case, as a publisher of language uh, products, they'll say, I'd love to work for you because it would be great for me because I could improve my language skills and I've always been interested in languages and that. There's, of course, it's good that they show interest, but they're not telling us what they could do for us. So on the Kennedy approach, uh, rather than just asking what the company, what a company or organization can do for you, which is also important. And nowadays in some uh, areas of the economy, companies have to do a lot for the interviewees. They have to fight for the battle, the war for talents. They have to offer good working conditions, flexibility, good pay. But you as the candidate, there are other people applying for the job usually, you're not the only candidate. So you need to get across what you can do for the organization. And again, it's a very simple, a very banal point, but uh, a lot of people, when they come to job interviews, they have not thought about how they can solve the organization's problem, how they can offer the skills needed to help the company. In other words, they don't sell themselves and show how they can be the solution to the, the organization's problem. Any organization which is uh, advertising a job or to whom you're applying has a problem. They need the job position filled. You need to show how you are the person that can do that. And you can usually do that by carefully reading the job advertisement, what is being looked for, and showing how you have the skills necessary and not just telling them what they can do or asking them what they can do for you. So remember the Kennedy approach, adapt it, ask not what the organization can do for you or not only ask, find out what you can do for the uh, organization. Tip four, be aware, are the interviewers still awake? An exaggeration here, but some people come to job, um, uh, come to job interviews and they are completely unaware of the, what's going on around them. Now, Anna Lena's asked, is this being recorded? It is Anna Lena. All these sessions or most of these are being recorded so you can watch it again afterwards. You can catch up with what you missed. Um, in other words, when you're in a job interview, watch the other people who are interviewing you, see whether they're showing interest. Are they giving you a signal you should provide more information? Or do they seem to have uh, lost interest? Have you spoken too long? Yeah. Um, so don't just be in your own world. I've seen people that just talk and talk and talk and talk, and they uh, they they haven't realised that the interviewers have uh, don't need any more information from them. So be aware of what's going on around you. Tip five: We're getting there. Be modest. Is that a good idea to be modest? Let me give you an a, let me tell you a story and ask you a question. We had a guy came for an interview uh, about fifteen years ago. And he told us he was the best at this job. He was fantastic. He could do everything we wanted. And, uh, you know, we wouldn't find anybody better. That was basically a summary of his message. Now, three of us or three people interviewed him. One was British, one was um, German, and one was American. And only one of these three liked him, his approach and wanted to employ him. Who was it? This is not a joke. Who was it? The British person, the American, or the German? Okay, so looking at your answers, most of you've written have said the American, not all of you said the American. Now I'm going to guess why you said that. Um, I'm going to guess that you're saying you, you, you have a kind of cultural, 
excuse me for saying this, but a cultural cliche in your minds that Americans are extroverts and like to sell themselves, and therefore they liked this approach. So forget your cultural cliches. It was not the American. Who was it? The British or the German? Okay, now the answers are a bit more even, a bit more, bit more towards the German. Yeah, actually, it was the British person. I know that because that was me. I was the only one who liked this approach. The other two didn't. The American guy was a very shy, introverted guy who probably just didn't like that way. The German woman didn't like it either. So two of them um, were, didn't like it and one did. So did the guy get the job? Did he get the job? Two didn't like it and his approach and one did. Did he get the job? keeping you busy with these answers, keep them coming in. Most of you are saying no. Okay, he did get the job, even though he was, even though one would liked it and two didn't, because I was the one who liked it. And in this situation, I happened to be the boss. And so I made the decision. Um, but why did he get the job? Anybody, who's the fastest to put in the answer why he got the job? Why did he get the job? Exactly. He was the best. You've got it. You're what a great group you are. You've got it. That's the answer. He was the best by a mile. In fact, he was even better than he said he was when he came to. Uh, so is modest really a good idea? No, maybe it's not. Yeah. In other words, don't be so don't be so, modest is a cultural thing, how we interpret it. You're there to sell yourself, yourself, sell yourself in an attractive way. Obviously not overselling yourself, but there's no but and you could say his approach might have you, you only needed one more person instead of me who didn't like it and he would have been out and that would have been a shame because he was really good. How do you find out who the best? Because you're looking at everything. You're looking at their application. You're looking at their experience. You're looking whether they can answer questions and you want to know, um, can they provide evidence or not evidence of, uh, can the information that suggests they can do the job? Do you know ultimately? No, you don't. You don't know until somebody actually does the job whether they're good enough or not. You never know. This is a mistake people make in their job applications and in interviews. Uh, what they, uh, it's yes, it can be difficult to get your first job. It's always difficult. It's chicken and egg. You need to get started to get experience. If you don't have job experience, you need to get experience of voluntary uh, work or other things or summer jobs or part-time jobs or whatever, just to get started. Um, do we hire candidates with no experience? Um, it depends on the job. Some jobs you can do, other jobs you wouldn't do. Tip six, what do I mean here? People often describe their jobs. They say, I was the marketing manager and uh, this was my responsibility, but they don't say what they actually achieved. So I don't want to just a description of what your job title was or what your responsibilities were. I want to know, or, you know, in interviewers want to know what did you actually achieve so look at if you if you if any of you have a um you know you have a job you have a written job application you know your uh, your cv your covering letter look at it closely does it say what you actually achieved in your previous situations and not just describe what you were supposed to do um yeah Tip seven, be active and bring intelligent questions and dance. What I mean by this is that um, my personal opinion is that if a job interview is going to take an hour, I, I want it to be a job or a half an hour. I want it to be an enjoyable experience. I want somebody who themselves brings questions. And what I mean by a dance is it's a kind of a dance between the interviewer and the interviewee. You're reacting to each other. You know, you're not just sort of static. You're not just sitting there. You need to take part in the interview. You need to shape the interview through your questions and through your answers and create a dynamic between you. I'm not suggesting you actually physically stand up and dance. Uh, it's a metaphor. Tip seven. Be honest. Yes, but not too honest. You are not obliged to this case, you know, we talked about honesty earlier. Um, honest is good because if you lie and you and you claim, for example, that you've had twenty, you've had ten years experience as a, as a, you know, as a sales manager, and it turns out you haven't, then you'll probably lose the job afterwards. So you can't lie to the extent, in a way that endangers. But you don't have to go in there and say, and look, here's all the terrible things about me. 
Yeah, you are making a selection of the truth. We once did a, a magazine a few a couple of years ago where the, this was the title. It said lying is good. Um, it had a star by it and the bottom it said, but that's not the whole truth, which was supposed to be funny. So the point is, we're always giving partial truths. Uh, we never give the whole, we very rarely give the whole truth. Uh, so in a job interview, you're being honest, you're not making things up, but you're not, you're not saying, oh, and by the way, I think I ought to tell you, if you want the full picture of me, here's all the terrible things that you need to know about me. Um, so honesty is a, it's not a black and white category, it's a degree. Tip nine, be yourself. This is, this, is, um, this is also a bit um, banal, it sounds, but I say choose carefully. Now, here's a quote from a film about the Brit former British uh, Prime Minister Winston Churchill, where just before he went to give an important speech in the House of Commons, his wife said to him, you'll be OK, just be yourself. And he answered her, yes, but which one? We all have multiple selves, multiple aspects of ourselves, if you prefer to put it that way. So again, you're, what you're trying to do in a job interview is showing, you're showing the parts of yourself that will help you get the job. Uh, some people don't like this idea. They think, oh, this is being inauthentic. I don't think it is. I think it's just selecting the parts of yourself that you show. When I come to work, I show certain parts of myself. When I'm at home with my family, I show other parts. When I'm here talking to you, I'm also uh, showing and behaving in a particular way. So this is nothing, uh, there is nothing wrong with being flexible and showing yourself to your best advantage. Final tip. Um, Final tip, don't be afraid to be imperfect. It can be charming. Um, for example, in the area of language, unless you are applying for a job as a professor, let's say of English, when you're applying to work in an international situation and English is not your first language, it might be a job, it might be an internship or whatever, then what's important is not that your English is perfect according to a textbook model, it's that you communicate effectively, that you get your message across. So if I look at this example here, if somebody said in a job interview, last year we have increased sales by 30%, and let's assume it's true, it's not a lie, um, and uh, then we could look at this in different ways, you know, we could think, oh, that's very impressive and the person says we doesn't say I so it's includes inclusive thinking of their whole team uh, that's good now if we were being very if we were uh, trying to be sort of very like a professor we might say well hang on this is not the right tense last year it should be the simple past we increased it really doesn't matter that is not the kind of we don't need grammatical perfection what we need is you we, you need to sell yourself communicate effectively and when you're speaking in a language which is not your first language uh, or even when you are speaking your first language but particularly when it's not your first language don't worry about grammatical or linguistic perfection communicate your message um, you're communicating you're not trying to at this you're not trying to pass an English test usually in a job interview okay we have one more minute I think so I'm going to give you a bonus tip how about that it was prepared um and the bonus tip is uh just something for you to go and way think about that's all i'm trying to do give you things to think about how you um how you present yourself be attractive now i'm not talking here about physical attraction i mean you know to be honest human decisions are made on all sorts of basis including our reaction when we see somebody i don't mean that what i mean is make yourself the kind of person and present yourself as the kind of person that other people will want to work with. So make yourself attractive in that way. Other people some are taking decisions here on whether they want to work with you. Your job is to help them make that decision and to offer you the job. And the last slide here is simply my contact details. Uh, I just want to point out for uh, that I, um, having been doing this job for 20 years now. I uh, finish at the end of November and as editor-in-chief of Business Spotlight and my successor 
Judy Gilbert, uh, Judith Gilbert, uh, is taking over from me. So uh, my email address is there, hers is there, and I'd like to thank you all very much for coming and for taking part so actively in the chat. And I think we finished pretty much on time. So um, I'll leave it there and say thank you very much to you all and enjoy the rest of the conference. <laughs>